Let's get two minutes back on the clock and your time starts now. All right, time is up. Let's get to the answers here. Uh, now, what is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, based on this presentation here, um, full marks are going to be to acute bacterial otitis externa. That's going to get you the full three marks there. You specified acute, you specified bacterial, you specified otitis externa. Uh, if you start to drop out any of those features, you're going to drop marks. So for instance, if you specify just otitis externa, you'll still get one mark, but those are potential marks you've thrown away. Uh, now, what are the things here that would help make me think that this is more likely to be something like bacterial otitis externa compared to uh, fungal? Um, it tends to be really the discharge. So here we see that red kind of scaly skin, uh, almost cellulitic type appearance. Um, that tends to be a lot more uh, classic for uh, bacterial infection, whereas with the uh, fungal infections, we see a lot more of the kind of uh, discharge, fluffy, white, kind of mucky stuff, um, a lot more purulence to the discharge compared to the bacterial infection there. So uh, in the, the scheme of things, this is probably going to be bacterial. Uh, now, of course, this could also be an acute facial or periauricular cellulitis. There's not quite enough in there to make me say this is um, going in through cartilage. Certainly the um, uh, rest of the ear isn't looking as inflamed. It really is predominantly that canal there. Um, again, if you were to kind of miss out on some of those other defining features, cellulitis would still get you one mark probably, um, but uh, lacks that specificity of the acute bacterial otitis externa. Uh, of course, you can't really exclude things like allergic contact dermatitis or irritant contact dermatitis in this kind of setting, even though they've specified there's no previous skin conditions, no previous, um, ex no new exposures, I should say. Uh, it is one of those things you have to keep in the back of your mind. Um, patients sometimes forget things they've come into contact with, or it may be something they've, you know, held up their ear, a new phone was, oh, great, hit the microphone, that's fantastic. Uh, they may have a new uh, receiver on a phone or something, or a new um, ear blob, ear bud, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, that they could have used without thinking, or they could have borrowed a friend's ear bud without thinking. Um, our, we are not the greatest historians, is what I'll say. Uh, so something I would, would keep in mind here. Uh, so Jenna nailed it, otitis externa, well done. Uh, again, try and get in on those little specific extra things that uh, help get you extra marks for not much extra work. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, oh, and yes, um, something to me is put in here is there bonus marks for specifying which side. 
Uh, yeah, look, potentially. Uh, I think certainly if you were to put a left bacterial otitis externa, you, you're probably going to get um, three marks as well. Um, I don't know if you'd get four marks per se if you said acute uh, left bacterial otitis externa. Uh, but yes, whenever possible, please do try and specify the side. So something I've missed out on here. Good pickup. Well done. Okay, now we do have more questions here. So let's get two minutes on the clock and your time starts now. All right, time is up. Let's see those answers. And this is a main question. I'm sorry, but there is a point to it. I promise, I promise. Uh, so this is uh, the answers here ripped directly from ETG, which uh, hopefully are your Bibles in day-to-day -day practice. Uh, and per ETG for uh, diffuse otitis externa, we're looking at dexamethasone plus uh, fremacetin plus gramicidin. Uh, and no one's going to remember what the percentages are. You can in these circumstances. Uh, I know the college prefers, and uh, really in medicine we should be prescribing by generics rather than brand names. Uh, there were software updates a few years back that meant pretty much all of our scripts got changed from brand names to generics, unless we tick that box to say uh, brand name on the script and brand names uh, not to be subs uh, substituted. Boy, did that cause fun with insulin. Um, <clears throat> but in situations like this where it's a combination or complex medication, they have said they will be happy to accept brand names. So if you put down Otodex or Sofridex as uh, first line, uh, or uh, Locacortin Viaform, you're going to get full marks. They're not going to necessarily want you to specify out every single component and the percentages. If you know what that product is, and it's a specific product, um, feel free to actually put that name in there. Would I put um, Keflex for Keflexin? Or, um, uh, probably not. You know, if you know what the actual generic name is, I would use it preferentially. But for situations like this where you're not entirely sure of the ingredients or perhaps the spelling, uh, feel free to use that brand name. Uh, now, again, it has specified doses are not required. Uh, so all you would have to write would be Otodex or Sofridex eardrops to the left ear. Um, if you want to really show that you know the answer, you could specify something like um, three drops three times a day for seven days, but they have said doses are not required, and don't risk mucking yourself up if you are not 100% confident with that. Um, you're not going to gain any extra marks. What you might gain is that little sense of polish to the examiner that you really know your stuff. So you've got to be really confident that you know your stuff if you're going to specify that when they've said that it's not required. Uh, now, with this as well, I wanted to highlight... NSAIDs like ibuprofen orally or paracetamol orally are still going to get your mark. This is a patient that has specified they're complaining of severe ear pain. 
And so acknowledging that, taking that into consideration and actually giving them something to treat that pain is going to get you marks. Is it going to get you as much marks? No. But if you get stuck in these situations, have a look at what other aspects of that presentation still require management and you can use that as a little bit of a get out of jail free card. Again, the person marketing exam is probably going to say, mm, yeah, okay, you probably need to read up on that one. But you're still doing something, you're still going to salvage marks where maybe you would have missed out completely. Uh, so seeing in the chat here, uh, Autodex, two to three drops. Uh, yep, fantastic. I would just stick to um, Autodex, uh, eardrops to left ear, uh, and you're going to get uh, full marks there. Uh, and oh, that's just showing off. You actually put in what it is. Well done. Uh, and yes, you're, you're going to get those marks there. Again, dose is not required, so you don't have to specify that. Um, and in here, the trap you would have fallen into is that you did technically get the duration wrong, so you'd be looking at seven days for that. Uh, and if they were being really nitpicky, really nasty, they may actually deduct marks from you for not having a fully correct answer. Uh, so again, I'd just stick to the um, uh, uh, answer the question that is being answered. All right. We have one final question for you tonight. So let's get two minutes on the clock and your time starts now. All right, time is up. Let's get to the answers. Uh, so again, we're talking about non-pharmacological options uh, and really the, the key to treating uh, otitis externa properly is to try and get that ear bone dry. Any kind of moisture is just going to be that culture medium that promotes ongoing growth. Uh, so you want it to be as dry as possible. How do we do that? Uh, dry oral toileting or uh, mechanical suction by a healthcare professional. Um, this is something that I think probably used to happen a bit more often in general practice than it does these days, um, but I'm sure most of you will have some kind of hearing care or testing facility nearby that does offer this as a service. If you're not sure, give them a quick phone call um, and just see what they do have set up there. Most of them will have uh, mechanical suction available. Uh, the really good ones will have microsuction uh, available, which is a, a very bit more specific, uh, bit more specialized setup, um, but works really, really massive wonders for these kinds of cases here. Uh, now, of course, they can just do dry mopping of the ear with rolled tissue spears. Um, six hourly is the current recommendation until the external canal is dry. The recommendations come from ETG. Um, you don't want to traumatize the tissue too much by doing it too frequently. Uh, which can again just promote infection. So six hourly until the uh, external canal is dry. Uh, you can try earplugs as tolerated during water exposure. 
this is one of those situations that often the, the discomfort and the pain from all the swelling there limits its use, um, but can be something to try. Uh, wearing a shower or bathing cap during water exposure will also get your mark there, but there is a little bit of um, uh, grouping that would probably be involved here in terms of using earplugs or wearing a shower or bathing cap. It's the physical occlusion of the ear. Uh, and of course, um, occlude the external ear canal with a moldable I've misspelled moldable, that's kind of gross there, uh, non-permeable material, and the example that's often used here is blue tack. Cheap, readily available, does the job. Uh, and that's to prevent water entry during water exposure. Uh, again, that's going to be grouped in there as a um, physical barrier. Uh, now, something that has come up in the chat here, uh, chap, chat here, oh, it's getting late, uh, is to simply avoid immersion activities for two weeks. And yes, not on this list, but perfectly valid. And that is something we tell patients time and time again. It's a non-pharmacological uh, management option, so uh, definitely going to get you marks there. Very well done.